We declare, O oh God, a place where you would be able to speak and minister into the lives of people. And irrespective of what they've gone through this week, irrespective of how they're feeling right now this morning, we pray, Holy Spirit, that you will minister. May your grace, O oh God, be multiplied on their lives. May grace and favor, O oh God, be, be their portion in Jesus' name. So we ask, O oh God, may your presence just be with us this morning as we worship you and as we praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now some verses, uh, so, sorry, Psalm chapter 128 says, Blessed are all those who fear the Lord, who walk in, his, in obedience to Him. You will eat the fruit of your labor. Blessings and prosperity will be yours. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children like olive shoots around your table. Yes, this will be the blessing for the man who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion. May, the Lord, may you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you live to see your children's children. Peace be unto Israel. Amen. It's a scripture that begins to speak a word of blessing. But it starts off by a statement. It says, blessed. That means you're not going to be blessed. You are blessed. Amen. Amen. And, 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 the, and the Bible gives a, a, a reason why you are blessed. You're blessed because you walk in the fear of the Lord. And then you because you walk in obedience to Him. Amen. And, and, and so blessed people know how to walk in obedience to God. Walk in the fear of the Lord. Amen. But then it comes in verse 2 and it says, And you will eat the fruit of your labor. Amen. Now one of the things is that many people want to eat, but they don't want to work. Yeah. Amen. So the Bible says you will eat the fruit of your labor. That means that what you put in, what you invest in your time, your energy, your strength, God says he will begin to bless. And he says, blessings and prosperity will be yours. That means when you put your energy and your effort into something, it must produce blessings and prosperity. Amen. So that's that's the word of God over our lives. But then he goes on and says, your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Amen. That means uh, not only will she gonna enjoy success in every area of her life, but she will enjoy success even in your home. Amen. And he says, your children will be like olive shoots around your table. This is a blessing. Yeah. Amen. That means when you sit around your table, your family is there. You're celebrating together with them. That's what, what the bless, a blessed life is. A blessed life is not just I'm having all the means, I'm having all the finances. No, no. It's having people around you who matter to you to share. Yeah. Amen. Because you know when things go tough, it is the people that are around you yeah. that matter the most. Yeah. It is that family, you know, the ones that you, you think, you know, sometimes we spend so much time with our friends, we spend time with this person and that person, but the reality is, it's those people that when you're in the lowest part of your life, it's your family that brings you. Amen. So he says, and then he says, this will be the blessing of a man who fears the Lord. And then he goes on and says, may you see the prosperity of your life, all the days of your life. But I like verse 6. May you live to see your children's children. Yeah. Amen. That's a blessing as well. Amen. So we we, we, we we bless not only to see one generation, but we bless to see the next generation as well. So I pray that this will be a word of, of blessing as we pronounce it over your life. You say, Lord, I receive it. Amen. May I be, uh, receive blessing and prosperity will be mine. Our homes will be blessed. Our family will be blessed. When we sit around our table, you, you, God, will furnish it with good food. Amen. And you will provide all that we need. Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for your sons and for your daughters that are in the house today. For those that are joining us online, we pray today that you will bless them. We pray for households today. We pray for families today. That even as they come and as they spend time in your presence, Father, knit homes and knit marriages and knit relationships within the home within parents and children and children with their parents. I pray, oh God, may there be healthy homes. May, may that be the blessing. May that be the prosperity. More than, more than money and more than accolades and more than uh, achievements, oh God. May, may, may our home
homes we bless because we have those that sit around the table that our homes of God will have the character of love and, and the atmosphere of faith and grace to God even in our homes. So we pray today over every household that is represented, every household that will come within the sound of my voice today. Bless them today. Bless our time as we spend in your presence. We will be built up in courage by you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Well, God bless you. Let's worship God together. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We come to praise God. Amen. We know we live in such uncertain times, but we know that we serve a God is possible. Amen. If we say it, we will do it. But you gotta believe with me right now this morning as we praise our Father. We pray. All things are possible.
We have this confidence. Come on. You've been in one. It's time to activate you right now.
over the lives of their sons and daughters. We speak that they will be victorious. For those that are in Christ, those of God that are hid in Him, Father, we declare that they are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus, and that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. We speak victory in every area of their lives. Whichever they are in their trust in you, in their homes, in their families, at their schooling, at their university, or in their, in their jobs, at their business, I pray today, may you bring, give them victory, because victory belongs to you, Lord. Victory belongs to you, the Lord of 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 the Lord Imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. We bring into captivity every thought of the evil one. We declare today, oh God, that the, that the mind of Christ, oh God, give them the mind of Christ. Father, for those that are trusting you for employment and open doors, Lord, open doors right now. We pray, oh God, that you're creating opportunities. You're creating, oh God, the space for employment for them. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can think, ask, or even imagine. So I pray today, bless your sons and your daughters. Even this morning as we sit to God to receive the word, we believe that the entrance of your word brings light and life. Thank you for anointing your servant and even as you will share the word of truth, oh God, may our hearts, oh God, be be strengthened, may our lives be strengthened. May your God speak through her. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Thanks to the worship team. Amen. Amen. Truly our God is good. Amen. And our God is faithful. Amen. And so this morning we are blessed to be in the house of the Lord. And for those that are joining us online, welcome. Amen. Uh, truly the Lord is doing amazing things, amen, and uh, the Lord is always faithful to us, amen, and so today, uh, Pastor Maggie is going to bless us with, a, with the word of the Lord today, but even as she prepares to, to share the word of the Lord with us, we want to just use the moment just to acknowledge her and even her ministry, even within the house of the Lord. Now, traditionally, uh, October is Pastor's Appreciation Month take the time just to appreciate those who labor amongst us, amen? And uh, we know that it's no easy feat to, to labor amongst God's people, but we know that there is a great reward, amen? And so today we want to acknowledge Pastor Maggie for serving even within the house of God and within Father's house as a family, being a blessing to many of us, amen? And, uh, and so we thank God for her and we thank God for her ministry. We pray that in the years to come, that God will increase the measure of His grace and favor over your life. Amen. And that uh, we, we know that God is shaping you. And, and it, it's just kind of like uh, if you see the years of ministry, like God just hones it in. It just kind of brings in into a place where, you know, whenever you start off uh, ministry, it was almost like the, uh, the disciples when Jesus said, let down your nets. They caught all the fish. All different kinds of fish, you know. They, that's what they did. But in in John chapter twenty-one, when he 
when he call, calls them and he says, okay, let down your net. And, and they caught fish, but the Bible says they caught 120 big fish. You know? So this time they weren't just ca uh, casting a net for anything. And as you mature in ministry, that what, that's what happens to ministry. God begins to just hone it in. And this gives you a, 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 a area where you focus and God gives you great breakthrough in it. And that's what I pray for you. I pray that God will, will bring you to that place of big fish. Amen. Amen. To a place where there's a maturity, not only in the things of God, but in, in, in where, where God has called you to function. And we thank God for you in, in serving within the, the local house. The Bible says uh, we, we, we thank God and we celebrate those that labor amongst us. Amen. That uh, that brings grace and bring grain. Amen. The the Bible says when when Abraham saw when he descended Melchizedek and the grace that Melchizedek carried over his life, he brought of the spoils of war to to Melchizedek. And uh, Melchizedek gives him two things. He gives him bread and wine. And, uh, and 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 the two things that he gives him is that he gives him word and revelation. And, uh, and we know that Jesus is our high priest. Amen. He's our man, isn't he? Amen. And that when we, when we bring our sacrifices to him, and we, we lay it at the altar, that God, may God give you fresh bread from heaven, the bread of heaven, and may the Lord give you fresh revelation for this season. Amen. And we thank God for you, and we celebrate you uh, in this. Uh, there will be days of greater celebration. But I want to just pause in this moment, just to acknowledge who you are and what you're doing. Not only are you a wife and a mother and a grandmother, amen, but you're a, you're a daughter of the Most High, mm -hmm. who carries the word of God in your mouth, amen. Mm -hmm. and like Deborah, who carried many titles and many other, uh, you know, in the Bible, uh, she was a judge in, in, in her day, uh, that I, uh, I believe that there are many, that we can wear many caps and we can wear various things. Uh, uh, have the ability to do various tasks at one, at one given time. But God can only be with the grace. Amen. Mm -hmm. So may the Lord continue to speak to you as you bless us today. Amen. Amen. God bless. Amen. Let's put our hands together for God's name. on the wall and we had a volleyball 
and string across our, our, our building and our main house and we used to play. And then we used to make, uh, you know, curry with leaves and all those kind of things. And we used to put a blanket over the chairs and make our tent. And we, it, was, it was that kind of uh, generation that we grew up in. And then when I look at my girls, uh, this, there was more advancement. And when they started, when they grew up, they used to go to McDonald's and play in the play areas and they had TVs and uh, games and books and all of these kind of things. And so there was an advancement. And now, with my grandson, that there's, there's so much that's going on, you can't even understand how these little children can speak and say things that they do at this age. And so I was sharing in the morning service and I said to them, you know how at, uh, this one of the days uh, last week, uh, he took his toy laptop and he was sitting and uh, he said to me, uh, Mashi, please be quiet. And I said, uh, why? He said, I'm online and I'm uh, in a meeting with my boss. <laughs> and uh, so you know, it took me aback a little bit because I think to myself, you know, this child, what is online? What he knows about all those kind of things. And then a little while later, he took his laptop again and I said to him, uh, what you doing now, Evan? And he says, uh, I'm writing a document. And I said, oh, about what? He said, it's about a 10 wheeler truck. And I'm thinking to myself, at that point in my, my age, I didn't even know what was document or you know what was online or whatever. But the world is, the point is that the world is advancing. But for us, from my mom's generation to mine, to my kids, and now to my grandkids, there's always been a constant. And that constant was the relationship with God and I was serving him as a family. That was the, the constant, whether we were poor or whether we didn't have much or we didn't have time or we progressed or we advanced and we at this point right now, we have relationship with God and we grew with God and we've come to the place right now because when we look at the scripture in Proverbs 22 and verse 6, it says, train up a child. Train up a child. The second part says, in the way he should go. And then it goes on and it says, when he is old, the fourth part says, he will not depart from it. What a powerful word that Solomon here speaks. And we know Solomon was one when, when uh, one of the wisest kings in the Bible. In fact, he was the wisest because that was what God had given him. And he knew this the, from the days of Abraham, and from, in the, from the scriptures in Deuteronomy and all of those things about what it was like to live in God's presence. And when, he, when, he, when we look here in, in, in Deuteronomy chapter 6, from verse 6 to 7, it says, these commandments that I give you today that are to be on your hearts. So God is just not telling you you can do it or you don't do it. He's not giving you a choice. He says, these are commandments that I'm giving you. And the commandment is that you impress on your children's hearts the plan, the will, the purpose of God. That's what we have to do. And we have to impress. You know what impress means? You know when you, when, when you, you uh, it's almost like if you have a, like a piece of a dough or something and you have a pattern and you press it in and it makes a mark. You know what that is? It, it, it's impressing it. So that it's making a mark on their lives. When we are teaching and training our children or training our children in the ways of God, that must be an impression on them. It says, talk about them when you sit at home. But the commandments of God, the word of God, talk about them when you sit at home. That means when we're sitting at home, there's just not supposed to be just any kind of way that we just carry on our lives. And say, you children, you do that on your side. We'll do this on our side. You go here, we go there. No. It's talking about us as a family. Impress on your children when you are sitting at home, when you're walking on the road. That means don't miss an opportunity to impress in the hearts of your children the 
was and I said to the people, I said, you know, when we go to bed, we, we got this thing or whatever about reading stories to our children. Right? Some of you that have the, the younger children, the more used to it, the bigger ones, you don't want to tell them stories, they will tell you stories. <laughs> so when you, when, you, when you lie down, and I was saying to them, I said, you know what, some of these fairy tales that we read now, if you have to think about it, you think, I, I don't think I should even be reading this to the children. Think about the, uh, the three little pigs. How are they building their house? There is this wolf, no business he got. But he comes and he huff and puff, blowing their house down, blowing their house down. And then he goes and he wants to, to, uh, to take their food. These are the kind of stories we're telling our children. And then we want to know why they're frightened when they're sleeping. You're telling them about the big wolf that's coming, coming to blow blow. They may be hearing the wind outside and say, oh, maybe there's a wolf outside. So we need to be careful what we're placing into our children's lives, what we are talking to them about, what stories we are giving to them. And, I, and I, for me, it's so important that when we are speaking, instead of giving them all these fairy tales and airy tales, we should be talking to them about the word of God. Have your simple Bible stories that you're giving them. Impressing it on their hearts. Mm. Speaking it to them. Because the more you instill the word of God in them, the more you find they will grow up to be strong young men and women of God. You won't have a struggle to bringing them up in the ways of God. Because that's what it says when it speaks in, in, um, in, in, the, in the, uh, the first child, part of it. It says, train up a child. You don't say teach the child. Because when you're teaching a child, the child can say, this is what I can learn. This is what I want to learn. This is what I don't think is good for me. This is what I don't think will be applicable to me. Right? We all know that we went to school. We, uh, we, had, we had homework. We, some of us decided which, which subjects we liked better. Some of us did history. We don't even remember half of it. Some of us did geography, we don't even know how to, we get lost everywhere we travel. Now we got uh, Google Maps and all of those kind of things. So it never made much of an impression on us. That is why when we talk about the Word of God, it just says don't teach them the Word. Because they can decide, I want to take this and I want to take that. As a parent, you have to determine in your heart, and even me, as a grandmother who's taking care of the kids, determine in our hearts that we want to train them up. And the word train means to commit or to dedicate them. Now you're making a conscious decision. You see, when you have your babies and when you come to church and you want to pray, you want pastor to pray, not only to keep the evil spirits away, then you can go out in the night. You know how people say, we must dedicate the child before we go out that time. Isn't it? That's the thing. It, be, it, it becomes such a... a a thing within, within, within us, even as Christian families, when we say we do, we mustn't take the children out. So our dedication when we come, it just becomes all about that, that pastor must pray and dedicate them so that now we are able to move. It's not about that. When you bring in your child, and when pastor speaks this, this verse, and he says, train up the child in the ways it will go, he will go. That means he says, are you committing to dedicate this child in the service of God. And then, not only does he speak to the parents, because we as the family of believers that are here, we are also in agreement. Because when he says, when he says to all of us, and so now the family of God will stand up. Because we, all of us, are involved in the bringing up of this little child. Because even if we are not directly involved, we are praying over them. If we see there's a slight way they went wayward and we know it, we don't keep quiet about it. Maybe you are in the shopping center and you see one of our young boys or girls going astray, doing something wrong. So, oh, not my business. <laughs> the parent must find out I don't want to interfere. No, we committed. Yeah. Where we said, this is what is happening. If I don't tell the parent and something happens to this child, it's on me. So when we're committing our children, for dedication, we all of us are involved in their lives. Not to mind people's business or not to be interfering, but to train them up in the ways of God. That is our responsibility. So when it says, and then it says, train them up in the way he should go. That means as a parent, you determine which way your child will go. Nobody else must determine how your 
child will know. You have to determine it. So the more you bring them into the presence of God and you show them what it is like to worship, what it is like to praise God, what it is like to stand in his presence, the more you do all of this, you are showing him the way he should go. You're showing him how he should live, how he should serve, how he should worship, how he should pray. Because that is the way you're training up your child. And sometimes we become so busy with our own lives. And, and it's sad to say that because of the way the economy is going and two parents have to work, it becomes a bit of a crunch. But you have to take the time. Leave some things aside and spend time with your children. When Pastor spoke today, uh, when, he, when he read the morning scripture from uh, the Psalms 128 and verse 3, it says, And your sons will be like olive shoots around your table. Oh, wow, that was powerful for me. Because when I read it, I said, Lord, this is something, if you look at my notes, you'll find it in my notes here. God, what a confirmation. That what I wrote here to speak has been already confirmed in a scripture that even before I could hear. What is he saying? That when you're sitting around your table as a blessed family, as a man that fears the Lord, you're sitting around, you have sons and daughters around your table that are like olive shoots. Powerful. Mm. Olive represents the oil of the anointing. Mm. You have these young children that are budding in your home. Yeah. They have yeah. potential. Yeah. Amen. They have the spirit of God that is inside of them. And God has given us this responsibility as parents. What an awesome responsibility to lead by example. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, lead by example, which means that they have to look at you and they have to follow. They have to see what you're doing and they do it. If they see you praying, they will pray. If your children become children that don't want to pray and read the word, look at your life. What am I, what am I doing? What am I not doing? That I have to force my children to, to read the word of God. But if they see it as a daily thing in us, in our lives, every day, we, this is what we do. And we can kneel down and pray. The other day, Ma was kneeling down and praying at home. Evan was running around. It seemed like he was oblivious to what was happening. But after a, a few, a, a, a little bit of time, we found, I found him sitting, uh, going onto the city and had his hands like this. He was bow, knelt down and bowing. And I asked him, what are you doing, Evan? He said, I'm praying like Gigi. That is how you lead by example. Yeah. Yeah. They need to see it. Our children like visual. Yeah. Our children like that. Yeah. But if you, if, you, if you put a TV on for them and they've got a, 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 a picture there, then you start to talk to them, they will they will identify with it more than if you just have to talk to them. So children see, they, they see, they like picture, they like to, to uh, the example, they like to look at what you're doing. So even when you are eating, and when you, when you eat, and sometimes, you know, when you're so hungry, you just, the food is right hot there before you, you just don't even think, it's just take and gobble. And then when your children are sitting to eat, and when they do the same thing, then you want to shout at them. Why you didn't pray? Oh, but mommy, you didn't pray when you left. <laughs> Lead by example. Yeah. Pray for your children and pray with your children. Yeah. Our children learn to pray by the way we pray. They won't know how to pray otherwise. You know, there are some prayers that we, we, we learned over the years, you know, so it's scary prayer sometimes. You know, when we say that now I lay my head to sleep, my soul to rest, and if I don't wake up, and my, my, my soul be with you, or something like that. And I'm thinking, yes, the children must be scared to sleep. What if they don't wake up next morning? Isn't it? And then we want to know why our children are waking up screaming in the night. Why they are waking up and they're crying. Why they're not having a good sleep. Because of all of these things that we don't really think about, but we just do it. Because it's been done, you know, all of these things. Let our children sleep with a powerful prayer. Amen. Yeah. Come on, families. Yeah. Amen. Let our children sleep with a powerful prayer. When they go to bed, they must be excited yeah. about waking up the next morning yeah. to face the new day. It does not matter what is going on in our families. Sometimes we like to share what is happening. But when we share what is happening, we give our 
children our hope by the way we play. If we say to our children they want certain things and we can't afford it, don't say, oh, Daddy, don't that money is so poor. Don't give them that story. Say, right now, we can't afford this. But we're going to pray because God is our provider. Teach them how we can provide. Teach them how in the little things that the other people don't have, but you have. If he doesn't have the fancy car that the neighbor got, but he's got a car. Say, thank God for what you have. So if you bring and then you cultivate that kind of attitude, there will always be a spirit of thanksgiving in your home. So even when they're growing up and they're facing challenges in their homes, they will know God is my provider. I may not have everything, but I have peace. I may not have everything, but I have God. And that is how we lead by example. Teach your children love by loving them unconditionally. Parents, I cannot emphasize more how important it is for you to love your children. Love them. Don't say, oh, if I love my son, if I hug him and kiss him and all that, you know, he he might uh, be a softy. No. Your your son or your daughter will be stronger for the love that you instill inside of them. They won't go looking for it elsewhere. Sorry. Today, today Pastor gave us some statistics and he said that, uh, I hope I get this right, Pastor. He said, one out of four girls between the age of 10 and 18 are pregnant. Why? Because they look for affection and they look for attention and they look for love in other people because they don't get it at home. And it's not that you intentionally don't love them. It's just sometimes because of because of the what the happenings. Am I right? It's because of the happenings. Sometimes we forget to hug our children. When we come from work, we so tired get just take the shoes out, just uh, just go bathroom eat and oh I can't make it out of this week. And then your children, you don't know what happened to them in the day. You don't know what what they went through, who who can't, who was bullying them or or whatever they went through and they sit in that place of loneliness. And then there's one person that will come to them in the day and say, You're looking down, what happened? And they open up because they see the attention. So parents love your children unconditionally. Unconditionally. You know when when, uh, when Paul speaks in Ephesians 5 verses 1 and 2, he says, be imitators of God, beloved children, and walk in love. Be an imitator of Christ, even as I am an imitator of him. Paul is saying to the church, be an imitator of me. Hey, he had a lot of confidence in his relationship with God, in his walk with God, for him to say, be an imitator of me, as I am an imitator of Christ. That means when you see me, you see the characteristics of God in me. And that is what our our children must see. When they look at us, they must see a bit of God in us. They must see how God's characteristics work itself in us. That means we're not saying that there are times when you won't get angry, but how you get angry and how you handle it is what matters. You see? So we need to come to that place where our our children, when they're imitating us, they must imitate what is good. Children are like sponges. They will soak up whether it is good or whether it is bad. And sometimes they will take more of the bad than the good. Somehow it's just inbuilt for people to look towards negative than to look towards positive. So let's be careful. As much as we are work in in progress, every one of us, but when it comes to our children and our family, our children are treasures to us. They are the ones that will carry on the legacy. They are the ones that will carry on the future of the church. When we are too old or too sick or when we've gone six feet under, they are the ones who are going to rise up and take this work forward. So how we build them up is how victorious the church is going to be. We have to understand that. That is the awesome responsibility that is on our shoulders this morning. When we look at ourselves as, 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 as sons and daughters of God, when we say, God, I thank you for what you are doing in my life so that I am able to
which is sent from her. And, and, and instill and build in my, my children that which you have placed inside of me. You know, the other important thing that we need to do is we need to show our children how to serve. <coughs> there, are, there are times, you know, it's sad to say, but a lot of our children are very spoiled in that they like to be served. They like to be given everything at a specific time and all of those things. And it's hard for them to serve someone else. But we have to teach them a different way. We have to teach them how to serve. You know, our, uh, the, the thing that excites me most is when I see our young children, you know, when we go on outreaches, when we go out serving, when we go out doing hampers, when we go out go to the uh, old age homes, or when we go out to the uh, homeless shelters, and we see how our children rise up in those times. They don't care about whether they, what they're going to eat or what they're going to do. They, they want you to serve. They look at these people, they have compassion in their hearts. When they're going out to go and give pampers, you must see our little children, how they, how they pack up the things, how they go. They, this, it's almost like an ownership that they have. Come on. It's an ownership that they have to ministry when they say, if my, my parents are doing it, let me go now, let me, let me see what they're doing. And when you bring them along, even when you are not around, they will still come and serve. Amen. Yeah. They won't have to wait for you to say, let's go. Or sometimes they may even surprise you and say, Dad, if, it, if you try, let me go and help pastor. The, the way you teach them to serve is how they will live, to be servants of the Most High God. Then we need to teach them to love the Word. You know, that's the hardest thing, I think, that we have to get children to get into. A lot of people don't like to read. Am I right? Even some of us adults do. We don't like to read. So if we can listen to something, and it's easier just to listen to it and then, hey, we got our share for the day. But to read the Word of God, we have to make conscious decisions as a family to say, this is our time to read the Word of God. And when you take certain scriptures, take things that are easy, don't go take a all the begats and begats and begats and all of that, they won't understand anything. Take stories like how we, we read about David and Goliath, about how Joshua crossed the Red Sea, about how they took the stones and they put it on the other side so that the families could remember, the children could remember what happened. Give them all of these stories about how the children marched around the walls of Jericho and how the walls fell down when they started to worship and praise God. Teach them all these things that will build them up that will cause them to live successful lives. And then we need to understand the, the last thing that I'm going to speak about today is we need to teach them to pray by playing with them. How important is that? Pray with your children. As much as we pray and we declare over them on our own personally, pray prayers over them. They can hear those prayers. Let those prayers go out into the atmosphere. Let those prayers go out so that even if the enemy has anything against your children, he already knows that there's a declaration over this child. Amen. I cannot touch him. Yeah. Come on. Our children must never be touched by the enemy. Yeah. We have to speak those words over them. Build a wall of fire around our children. We need to speak words of encouragement to them and build them up so that as they go through this life, we know that if we don't do something over our children, the world is going to scoop them up and they will be lost forever. It's very hard to go and get someone that is lukewarm and make them to be on fire for God. We know it. We've been in experience in ministry for years. And we know how hard it is to go and minister to somebody that has gone out and to bring them back. It's very hard. Let's not go through that phase in our homes. Let's not say to our children, if you don't want to listen, you fall and wake up. What nonsense is that? We don't want our children to fall. Yeah. Yeah. We want our children to stand. Amen. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. When the Bible speaks in Ephesians 6 and it talks about the armor of God, it says, having done all to stand. So we don't go and counter like that with a negative word and say, you fall and wake up. We need to tell our children to stand. Give them that encouragement that no matter what you're going through, you stand. Teach our children.
children to speak up to us. Be open to them so that they are free to come and talk to you. There are times when we just say, no, 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 just now, just now, just now. That just now goes for days. And finally, we forget about it, but it festers in the lives of our children. So today, as I am here uh, 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 speaking to you, I see many young children. I see many uh, young adults. I see many little ones that are growing up. Let us teach them to grow in faith. Yes, we can have faith for our children. Isn't it? We have faith for our children. When they're writing exams, how, are, how we as parents, we get frantic. We, although they are praying and they are writing the exam, we act like we're writing the exam. Isn't it stress, anxiety? Annie will know this. Stress and anxiety goes through because she, that's how it is. But teach our children how to have faith for themselves. That even though we are praying, let them have faith to believe that as I am studying, God, you fill my mind. Lord, you give me the wisdom. Lord, you help me. Our children are coming to their final exams now. We need to see phenomenal results. Yes. Mm -hmm. We need to declare that. Because the children that are sitting here today, children that are watching online, you need to understand that when you are writing, God has blessed you with, a, with wisdom, with knowledge, with understanding. Amen. And as you sit and you absorb and you take things from your work, when you're sitting and you're writing in your, in your papers, you don't need to be anxious or worried about anything. As long as you've done your part, God will do his part. Yes. Amen. Amen. Allow our children to grow in faith when they are sick. We don't allow, we don't collect when they are sick. Children have fever, we, whoo, we don't know what to do. We are frantic, phoning the doctor. And say, They've only got a fever. Put them in some cool water. Put a face towel over them. Only when it becomes drastic, then you run. But in the other thing, the other thing is that when you are holding them and you're praying over them, they see in your face. The next time when you are sick, they will come and hold your head. Amen. Amen. That is how we need to build up our children. And so this life that we're living in is just not just a, a, a place where we just we just move into the motions. God has blessed us with beautiful children and beautiful families. We need to take care of them. We need to grow them up in the ways of God. This, the Bible says, so when they are old, they will not depart. I, grew, I came to know the Lord, or oh, I, I accepted the Lord into my life when I was 12. That was officially. But when I was 7 or 8 years old, I started going to Sunday school and the Lord touched me. I am now 54. That's a little bit. I have not departed. Come on. Yes. There are some of you, Gogo, that is sitting here. I don't know, Gogo, when you came to know the Lord. But you have not departed. In your old age, you're sitting here today. In this cold weather, with your nice warm jacket, a jersey. But you're sitting here today. You have not departed. Because there's some training that has happened in your life. Whether it was through your parents or whether it was people that you came into contact with or how you lived, you've not departed. Yeah. We've all been through challenges. That's why the Bible says when you train up your children in the way you should go, in God's way, when they grow older, they will still serve you. Yeah. Yeah. When they grow older, yeah. they'll still work for you. Yeah. When the times that even arthritis will catch them, they'll still work for yes. you. Amen. Because they will not depart because of what you have placed inside of them. So we need to understand today the important role that we play in the lives of our children. Be an example to them. Show them. You can say to your children, be imitators of me as I am as of Christ. Because that is what our home is about. I pray today that your home will be full of the fire of God. That your home will be a safe haven for your children. That your home will be a place where your children are happy. You know, some homes are so sad and dark and dull. When people come into your home, sometimes they don't even want to sit there for too long because they feel the darkness. Let there be joy in your home. Let there be laughter. Your, your neighbors must want to know what's happening there. There's a party carrying on. There's no party. We're just laughing about what's happened in the day. We just had some, a few jokes. Come on, people. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Let it be seen. 
in our families. Let our children experience laughter, joy, peace, happiness, strength in our homes. And yes, there will be challenges. The Bible does not say that we will live this life with the, on a bed of roses. There will be challenges. But how we face it as a family and how we come through the fire is what matters the most. So I pray today, and I, and I know as I stand here and as I watch, and I know that there are people online, families that are online that are watching, there are strong people in God. I'm encouraging you today. If in any way that we have lapsed in our judgment or lapsed in our way of bringing up our children and living our lives the way God wants it to be, let it be today that we turn things around. To say, I'm going to do the best that I can because God has placed this awesome responsibility, this assignment that will never ever uh, uh, end for me. My children must feel free to come into my home and seek my advice. They must not only come for the hot food and the baked goodies. So they can come in and say, Mom, I need your advice. Mom, I need something. And I must be able to impart. That is how you train. Training is an ongoing thing because there's always something new that God wants to do. Let's just now end the word. Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the beautiful families, Lord, that we are surrounded with. Strong people, oh God, and even though they may not realize it this morning, but they are strong in you. And so I pray, Lord, even for those families that are struggling this morning and are saying, how are we going to get through this? I pray that this word will not only have an abiding place, but will bring joy to them and will also give them instruction and give them some way, oh God, in which things of God can turn around in their families. So bless our families this morning. I pray, Father, that there will always be times of prayer, times of the word, times of worship in our homes, oh God, so that, God, our children and parents can be built up in the faith. So we thank you and give you praise this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.